in this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to discuss a concept known as the radial probability distribution of the electron found in the ground state of the hydrogen atom. And let's begin by recalling what the Bohr radius is. So according to the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, the Bohr radius is simply the distance from the center of the nucleus to where our electron is in the ground state of that H atom. And and the Bohr radius of the hydrogen atom in the ground state is given by this equation. So R naught, the Bohr radius, is equal to H squared multiplied by the permittivity of free space given by epsilon naught divided by pi multiplied by M, the mass of the electron, multiplied by Q, the charge of that electron given in coulombs. So basically, if we plug in our constants, we see that the Bohr radius of the electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom is given by about 5.29 times 10 to negative 11 meters. Now this Bohr radius will become important in just a moment when we define what the wave function is of the electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom. But first, let's recall a general idea. So, what exactly determines the wave function of our electron? Well, the first three quantum numbers actually determine what the wave function will actually look like. They determine the shape, the size, and orientation of the electron cloud produced by that electron. And the electron cloud is designated by that wave function. So, electrons with different quantum quantum numbers correspond to different wave functions. And so, whenever we specify the wave function psi, we also have to specify the first three quantum numbers. So we have to specify the first quantum number known as the principal quantum number given by n. We have to specify the orbital quantum number given by l. And we have to specify the magnetic quantum number given by ml. So basically, the fourth quantum number does not actually determine the orientation, size, or position of our wave function. The last quantum number known as the spin quantum number is an intrinsic property of the electron. It does not actually determine what the shape, size, orientation is. So whenever we specify the wave function psi, we only have to specify the first three quantum numbers. So, let's begin by defining what the wave function is for our electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom. So, this corresponds to a principal quantum number n of 1, to an orbital quantum number l of 0, and to a magnetic quantum number ml of 0. So, psi 1, 0, 0 is equal to 1 divided by the square root of pi multiplied by the Bohr radius R naught cubed and this ratio is multiplied by E to the power of negative R divided by the Bohr radius where R is simply the distance from the center of our nucleus. So this is the wave function that represents the electron cloud created by the electron when it's found in the ground state of the hydrogen atom. Now to find the problem probability, we basically have to take the square of the absolute value of both sides of this equation and we get the following result. So this is the probability distribution of our electron around our nucleus of that ground state hydrogen atom. And this is equal to 1 divided by pi r naught, our Bohr radius cubed multiplied by e to the negative 2r divided by r naught. So basically we multiply this by itself and we get the following result. 
Now, what exactly is the meaning behind this equation? So this basically gives us the probability of finding our electron at some distance r away from that nucleus, away from the center of our nucleus. And we see that as the distance r increases, as we get farther away from the center of the nucleus, the probability of finding that electron decreases exponentially. So we have the exponential function within this equation. And this can be readily seen by observing the following diagram. So the density basically decreases as we get farther away from the center of our nucleus where the proton and neutron are found. Now, let's suppose that we are tasked with finding the probability of finding the electron between two random points away from the center of the nucleus. And these two random points are given by r and r plus dr, where dr is simply an infinitely small distance. So basically, to find the probability, we have to take the product of these two quantities. So we have to take the product of psi or the absolute value of psi and the square of that multiplied by dv. So we know what this quantity is. This quantity is equal to this equation. But what exactly is dv? So first let's actually realize what type of shape we are actually dealing with. So notice if this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and the z-axis is coming out of the board, then what we are actually looking for is the volume of the region that is a shell that has an inner radius of r and an outer radius of r plus dr. So basically we want to find the probability of finding our electron within this spherical shell as seen in the following diagram. So basically, this is our spherical shell and we cut out a small section of that shell to show you the fact that the width of the shell is given by the width dr. So our inner radius is r and the outer radius is r plus dr and the width of the shell is given by dr. So in our case, the volume dv corresponds to the volume of the spherical shell with an inner radius of r and an outer radius of r plus dr. So we want to find the probability of finding our electron within this infinitely small, infinitely thick spherical shell as seen in this diagram. So we have to calculate the product of infinitely small volume dv of the shell and the square of the absolute value of the wave function. So what exactly is dv? How do we calculate the dv, the infinitely small volume, of our shell? Well, to find the infinitely small volume, we have to multiply the surface area of the shell by our thickness of that shell. Now, the surface area of any sphere is given by 4 pi r squared. And our thickness, in this case, is given by dr. So we see that dv is equal to this quantity. So the probability is given by taking the square of the absolute of the wave function multiplying dv and that gives us the square of the absolute value of psi multiplied by 4 pi r squared multiplied by dr. Now, this term, the square of the absolute of psi multiplied by 4 pi r squared, has a special meaning. So let's call this term, term A. So A is given the special name of the radial probability distribution. And we see that the radial probability distribution of the electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom is given by taking the square 
of the absolute value of the wave function multiplying by 4 pi and multiplying that by r squared where the probability or the radial probability distribution is given by p for probability distribution with the r subscript where r stands for radial. So basically if we take the right side of this equation and replace the square of the absolute value of the wave function with this quantity we get the following result and notice that our pi's will cancel and by rearranging we get the following equation so the radial probability of the the radial probability distribution of the hydrogen atom in the ground state is given by this equation so we have 4 r squared divided by the Bohr radius cubed multiplied by e to the power of negative 2 r divided by r naught. Now if we plot this on the x y axis where the x axis is our distance r and the y axis represents our radial probability distribution we get the following curve and notice that the peak of this curve the highest value for the radial probability distribution is given by this quantity and this corresponds to the Bohr radius. So this basically means that the most probable location of the electron when it's found in the ground state of the hydrogen atom is exactly at the Bohr radius of that hydrogen atom. It's at the quantity given by R naught.